On this episode of Dockside TV, we just had our first cold front of the year, jacket weather time. We're gonna go from last episode using the new matrix rip shad and shallow grass flats to now we're gonna go into deeper canals, still fishing grass, but with our matrix minnow, that's a subsurface bait that slowly sinks when you pause it. We're gonna catch a lot of nice trout. This first cold front of the year really made the trout show up and become very large and quality sized fish. All of our Matrix Bait Box subscribers are gonna receive nothing but hard baits on this upcoming box because this is all we use throughout this entire month are the hard baits such as the Matrix Rip Shed and the Matrix Minnow like you're gonna see in this episode right here on Dockside TV. throw them jerk baits this time of year but this is the quality of fish that we're looking for awesome awesome trout to start the morning oh and i lost him right at the boat that's another good one. Oh man how did i get off with six beautiful treble hooks not what we're going after but there is a tremendous amount of these things on the shoreline where these big trout are at. Obviously, that's a mullet. I doubt this. he was trying to eat it. He probably just got snagged in the chin. But that's what you want to be on when you're fishing these big trouters. Not necessarily mullets this size, but just mullets in general. Because the mullets... The smaller mullets in there is what these big fish are feeding on. Let's see if we can get a trout this time. Guys, I've been catching nothing but 12, 13 inch trout lately. And we come make a, we have one cold front come through this morning. I mean, a few days ago this week. Come in here and it's nothing but friggin' hammers. And he got them. Oh my goodness, that's two mon not monsters, but beautiful fish that got off. Oh my gosh. Good little trout here. There we go. So what we're doing today is we have moved off the shallow grass flats. We are fishing the man-made canals off the north end of the Lake Pontchartrain. And what these canals have nowadays with all of the fresh water we get every spring is they have really grassy shorelines and then it drops off to deep water. So we switch from the matrix rip shed which we were using in the last episode and we go to the matrix minnow when we're fishing deep water with jerk baits that way when you come off that grass line it still dives down so the boat right now is sitting in probably 10 to 15 foot of water but we're catching these trout right on the edge of the grass in a foot to three foot of water so the rip shed is it the rip shed would work but i like the matrix minnow a little bit better especially if some of the fish are off the grass in the deeper water Put this one up, see if we can get him on a roll. This little guy. That is the pip squeak of the morning. Well, this one looks super small to some of them ones we were catching earlier today, or shall I say, missing. Let this little guy go. Yeah, 
That's the size we're looking for, baby. It's one of my favorite things to do. Hard bait fishing. Pretty, pretty speckled trout like this one right here. Oh, yeah. Look at that bad boy. Lake Pontchartrain has been hurting for nice speckled trout this year. So, this is something we used to see on a regular basis, all the time. But here the last few years, it's been hard. So when we catch some nice fish like this, I get kind of excited. I'm gonna show you what we're using here. Let me put this fish in the well, and I'm gonna go over how we work this lure. All right, so this is the Matrix Minnow. And like I said, we're fishing deeper man-made canals today. And the Matrix Minnow is a little bit different than the Rip Shad. This one, when you pause it, it sinks down very slowly, but it'll sink down. The Rip Shad, when you pause it, it's, it floats back up. So these grass beds, these are really grass beds. They're grassy shorelines. So we throw it up over the grass, the water's high, and we're ripping it through the grass. And then when it comes off that grass, I'll pause it and it'll kind of start slowly sinking around the little where the drop off begins like right now the boat's probably sitting in 15 10 to 15 foot of water but we're throwing it up on the shoreline through some grass like i feel grass right there so i just try to rip it through it pause it and just work it back now sometimes you're gonna sometimes you'll catch the grass and if you do let's see got a little bit on there right there as you can see and I'm not even gonna worry if it's something that small I don't even care about taking it off you got you want to be up in that grass if you want to catch fish this time of year that's where the fish are at grass came off it's a type of grass that you can rip lures through it's it'll it'll hold a lure and grab it but it, a lot of times it doesn't hold on to the hook so the lure just pushes through it so it's what we call good grass, which means it's fishable. You can fish it, and that's where the fish want to be. And make a cast back where we caught that last one. But what I like to do is just put the trolling motor on a nice little pace and just cruise down these shorelines, and I'm just trying to feel for grass on my lure. If I'm not catching any grass for a while, probably not on grass and then I'll just pick up try a different chew line and I just want to keep the lure around grass as much as I possibly can some of these shore lines have a lot of grass some of them don't have any grass and every year it kind of changes on where the good grass grows this little pocket right here usually has a lot of good grass right around here Just doing. Oh, and I missed it. Golly. Well, we have missed some fish today. It's amazing how them fish get off with all of these hooks. But look, I even got this, his scale right there on that hook. Looks like a trout scale. Anyway, you're going to just rip, 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 pause. Pausing it is the key. They love it, pause. There he is. Got the wind blowing right here, working the trolling motor. The moment I hit that fish, I pointed the nose of the boat out, put it on a little, like a slow, keep me off that bank. The last thing I want to do is not pay attention and let the boat push up into the bank with the wind. There you go. This, this little pocket here could be good for four to eight fish. And if you let the boat get in there and you spook them, well, you caught one instead of four to eight. A lot of little things that I forget to explain on camera that just makes catching fish a little bit easier for us. Oh yeah. 
That's a party one. That's a party one. Boy, they got strong. That cold front came and they got big and strong. That right there will tell you how important a cold front is in the fall. We were catching just a few fish before the front. And boy, we had the hottest September I can ever remember. We're in October now and it's been a hot one too. So at least we just had back to back fronts. One was pretty tiny. The second one was a decent front. Good north winds. We were catching a few trout, mostly little ones, a lot of throwbacks. Today's been all beautiful fish like this right here. I'm gonna put this one up. Let me see if I can get another one real quick. Right here we came into this little pocket and we're catching some grass right on the bank and sure enough there's some fish right there. So again, I'm throwing right up tight. Look how tight to the bank I am. I'm probably gonna rub a little bit of grass I feel it. There's some grass right there. Rip through it. Right off that grass is where them bites are coming. We've had about four or five bites right here in this one little pocket. Water clarity is the key to jerkbait fishing. I find jerkbaits these hard baits like this are really effective when the water is real clear. That thing's just suspended and it's flashing and it's putting out a lot of flash from twitching it so hard. And the fish, a lot of fish are suspended this time of year and they can just see it from so far away. I like cloudy days, of course, who doesn't? But some of my, I have really, really good days in the sunlight sometimes. I, I talked about this on the last episode. I feel like the sun can really shine off of that shimmering jerkbait and really get the fish's attention too. But we're certainly catching them pretty good today, so the clouds can stay if they want. A good cloudy days like this is a good time to throw top water too if you want it. I'm sure we could get some blow ups on top water the way these fish are setting up and the size of them. Top water is always, always going to be your best way of getting a, a wall hanger. And I guarantee you they got some four or five pounders hanging around right now because we've caught several two to three pounders today. There he is. Oh, and I missed him. I almost hit the cameraman. I don't know if you can hear my drag rip out there. We have missed some fish today, guys. I don't know what the deal is. Miss four or five just in this one little pocket. Come on, baby. I got one too. You got one? Yeah, I wasn't even, wasn't even uh, moving the pole. I'm sitting there filming the cameraman, not even moving the pole. And I feel the. Uh, the pole start pulling. That right there shows you how important it is to pause the lure. I don't know if you got to pause it for that long, as it was probably paused for the whole 10 seconds John was reeling that fish in. But pause the lure. Rip, rip, pause. Let me show you John's fish. All right, this one's here is called the Nightmare. I really like this one, it's a cool lure. To see through on the bottom. You can see the balls, beads in there to give you that good rattle. This thing's really loud. And you can see the balls in there because the bottom of this one's clear. Let's get John's fish off for him. Two beautiful trout, guys. I mean, this is what it's all about. This is why I absolutely love the fall. It's because you catch beautiful fish like this right here. The John's using what we call the Marsh Cricket. It's a green, this looks like just a typical, beautiful like pokey imitation, bullet imitation, beautiful green back on the bottom with a flashing silver belly. Pretty natural looking lure right here. Oh, green. Oh, 
greeny. Oh, greeny. Okay, look how barely hooked he is. <laughs> Surprised we didn't miss this one too. Shows you a little versatility of the old Matrix minnow. Green trout and speckled trout. This green trout better watch out. The size of these trout, he, they might eat him. One canal over. One thing has stayed the same. We're still catching grass on our hook, but we've just bumped into a few bass in a row. That's what's so much fun about fall fishing is that you can catch bass and speckled trout and redfish all in the same spot. Now we've caught several bass to go along with our box of trout. <laughs> beautiful trout. There's so many places in Lake Pontchartrain that whole grass like this canal system does right here. Um, today we got a north wind so we're staying on the north shore but some other areas I like is Irish Bayou can be really good that's on the south shore. A lot of the, lot of the uh, shorelines between Irish Bayou and the Chef have some decent grass beds over there. Lake Catherine's a good place. Mud Lake off the West Pearl has been super hot, a lot of grass in there. But all the bayous on the North Shore, Bayou Lacombe, Bayou Liberty, um, you got Eden Isles, uh, obviously we're in Lakeshore today. Um, they all provide grass on the banks, whether it's gonna be on the Pontchartrain shoreline, which we really like that between Car Drive and Bayou Lacombe, Cane Bayou, Goose Point out on the shoreline flats, those are great. Or if you come up into the deeper canals like we did today, you just find where the grass is growing on the banks and you'll find these guys right here eating these things right here. Nightmare just ripped out his lip. Oh, woo. I like when it, I like when they're so big that I have trouble grabbing them. So what we're doing, obviously we've been over the technique uh -oh, of what we're using and how we're doing it. And I mean, just the, there's no secret spots. We fished eight different shorelines today, and I just keep on going, covering a lot of water with the trolling motor. But what I'm finding is, obviously, you want to be on the grass. But even more important than the grass is when I'm finding areas that have mullets working over the grass shorelines or pogies out in the middle of the canal. That's the key. You know, you, you obviously you got to have some bait source in there. And um, there's a lot of shorelines in here, and we fish a lot of dead water. But that's what we got to do. We just got to put the trolling motor down, get after it, grind, and then find the little sections that have beautiful fish like this. And when you do hit one, it's very rewarding. Because look at the size of these puppies. Another beautiful trout on that nightmare. Matrix minnow. Catch one of them hooks in the arm sooner or later. See if I can get another one real quick. The water clarity in here is absolutely stellar. Probably got three foot of visibility. Like I said before, clean water and hard jerk baits. They go together, together like spaghetti and meatball. Is a good combination. Grass, bait, clean water, hard baits, early fall. This is when you want to break out them hard baits and jerk baits. 
It's even top waters too. Some beautiful fish guys doesn't get any better than this this one's grunting that's a big male trout you've been seeing it's just throw towards the bank all day working it over to grass and you know different times of year we do different things when water temperatures will get in the 60s you'll see us fishing more at the middle of these of canals and even when it gets really cold fish get a little bit more scarce we'll start trolling to cover more water but right now Jerk baits over to grass, yielding mules. There he is. You get a double trouble there, John. Almost. Yeah, I'm just there he is. Oh, double it up. Double it up. Yeah, John's got one. Flip him right to me. I'll take him off for you. Ooh. Oh, watch him trouble. Nice little double up right there. Let me go ahead and end the show on these two, on this double up right here that John and I just caught. We're having a blast using these Matrix Minnow jerk baits. We're going to go ahead and flip the camera off and just have some fun to close out the day. Make sure to subscribe to our Matrix Bait Box, which is going to have a lot of hard baits in it this month, as that's what we've been using. As we talk about all the time, for you Matrix Bait Box subscribers, or if you're wondering what will be in the box, it's always going to be what we're using that month. And this month, it's been a lot of hard baits. Probably the next month, as it cools off, we'll switch and get a lot of Matrix Shads on the, on the heavier jig heads. But... Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Dockside TV, as we fish for every type of species on the Gulf Coast, from crappie to obviously speckled trout. I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as we enjoyed filming it, but we're going to go in, go ahead, flip this camera off, and see if we can get some big boys, some more big boys like this right here.